This video is made available by the Allegheny College Computer Science Department under a Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike No Derivative Works Version 3.0 license. Today you're going to build the Cardboard Duino, a cardboard based computer designed here at Allegheny College. First things first, you're going to need to cut out the circuit board from the paper. I recommend using scissors. You may decide to use something else. And then you're going to affix it to a piece of a manila folder. I recommend using the folded edge as it adds strength to your cardboard computer. Next, you need to poke holes in your cardboard Duino. In the electronics world, they call these vias. Or are they vias? Hmm. Next, cut your copper tape to length. Roughly match the length of what you see on the board. If it's a little longer, that's okay. Extreme precision is not required here. Now, I said, the LEDs only go in one way. You have to look inside to figure out the right way to insert it. Did he do it right? No. No, he didn't. All right, so now we're going to insert the LEDs. Those are the blinking lights. Find the large part inside of the LED. This is called the anvil. The anvil tells you which leg of the LED is the negative leg and should line up with the black dot on your cardboard Duino. Go ahead and insert the LEDs, taking care once again to make sure you line up the negative leg with the black dot. Bend them over on the back and affix them with a bit of hot glue. It might be easier to affix them on the top, as if you do it on the bottom you have to be careful not to get hot glue everywhere. There is no positive or negative to resistors. All you have to do is make sure you get the right ones in the right places, and then glue them down. Once again, bend the legs over on the back so that you can solder things to them later. The 0.1 picofarad capacitor has neither a positive or negative either. Insert that up by pin 1 and glue it down on the top side of the board. With this capacitor, fold the legs over on the lines. You'll see that we're going to be soldering some things together there and it's a little touchy. While we're at it, we'll continue with components that have neither a right nor a wrong. So we'll do the two 22 picofarad capacitors. Those are down on the lower left of the board. Remove them from their, their holder, poke them through, and bend the legs over. Now go ahead and glue all of those capacitors into place. Because we're gluing on the top, you shouldn't have to worry about getting quote unquote too much hot glue everywhere. Now we can add the 16 MHz crystal. There's again neither a right nor a wrong way, so we'll poke it through the board and then secure it with a bit of hot glue. If you want to learn more about this component, you can go to the Wikipedia and search for Crystal Oscillator. Now we're going to move on to a part that you can get wrong, so be careful here. We're going to do the 100 microfarad capacitors. Notice that there is a positive and a negative. The negative side is marked by a gray stripe on the capacitor. Insert them into the board, fold the legs over, and once again, go to town with your hot glue and make sure that they don't go anywhere. The next step is to insert the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator takes high voltages, like our 9 volt battery, and brings it down to 5 volts, which is what our tiny computer needs. Notice there is a dot on the voltage regulator. That lines up with the negative pin on the board, the black dot. On the back, bend the legs over so they follow the lines, and then secure the voltage regulator on the top with some more of your favorite thing, hot glue. Oh yeah. Now we're going to insert all of the headers. There's the male headers and the female headers. Insert the male headers at the top of the board and use a bit of hot glue to secure them. The long part of the pin should stick out the top. 
The female headers are very straightforward. Poke them through, and again, secure along their edge with a bit of hot glue so they stay in place. This is a great place for your partner to help hold them while you line them up and so they don't pop out and fall on the floor and get hot glue everywhere. The chip socket is what will hold the processor for our tiny computer. Notice there's a little nibble at one end. That's going to go up by pin 1. Be very careful when inserting it. The legs are not very strong, and so you want to make sure they line up nicely with the holes. Put a spot of hot glue at either end of the socket to hold it in place. But be very careful not to get any inside of the pinholes. Now it's time to start the wiring. This is where all of the craft in this project comes in. First, you'll want to make sure you cut each wire to the right length. Do this neatly. At the end of the wire, if it goes around a pin, create a tiny loop in the end of the wire with your needle nose pliers. If it's going against a piece of copper tape, you can leave it straight. Affix the hoop of the wire, and then come in with a gentle touch, and just bring a little bit of solder into place to hold the wire. Your partner will be invaluable to you here. Likewise, when you do the copper, just a gentle touch is necessary, and it will hold the wire in place. Where possible, just use the component legs instead of wire, but don't bend them around too much or they will break. Notice up here by the 0.1 picofarad capacitor, we've used the leg of the resistor to bend it around a pin in the socket to connect things up. This makes it a lot easier and we don't have to cut tiny bits of wire. We can just use the legs of the resistor and the capacitor. Like many tasks, patience and teamwork will give you a cardboard Duino that looks good and works well. Use each other to help hold things in place, help make sure that you're taking the right steps at the right time, and you will be highly successful in your efforts. Lastly, we're going to insert the processor into our cardboard computer. This is the AppMega 328. It is a 16 megahertz computer with a very small amount of memory and a very small amount of storage, built right into the chip. Fundamentally though, it is the same as the central processing unit, or CPU, that lives in your own laptop or desktop computer. Make sure you line up the little dot on both the processor and the socket. That should be up near the top, near pin 1. Gently align the processor and rock it into place. Do not bend the legs over by forcing it where it does not want to go. Now we test. We take the programming adapter, line up black and green, it's written on the adapter, and if all goes well, we'll see a green power light up on top of our board, or the bottom in this picture, and we'll see a blinking yellow light, our heartbeat, that tells us that everything is going well. Congratulations, you've built your first computer.